Shalom and uh, welcome to the Middle East Report. In this program today, we'll be asking, is the European Union illegally funding Palestinian settlements in breach of international law? Warm welcome to the program and today we have a very special guest all the way from the United States in Washington DC, Edwin Black, who's a New York Times uh, best-selling author. Not only that, he's an absolute genius and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the Middle East Report, Edwin. Well, thank you very much, Simon. It's a pleasure to be here with you. You've got an outstanding show and uh, every time I come to London, I make, I make it my business to uh, cross Richmond Park and uh, be in the studio. Fantastic. Edwin, um, I mean, it's been a, a couple of years since we last did a program together, but can you share with us a little bit of your uh, Jewish background and how you got involved in, in writing so many incredible books? Well, I think most people uh, know my story, but I'm happy to tell it again. My uh, mother was um, uh, uh, thrown out of a boxcar on the way to Treblinka by her mother. She was p pushed out of uh, the small vent and uh, my father, who walked away from a shooting place in Poland, found her in the woods, he actually found her in a mass grave, uh, a snow grave, and her um, a leg was sticking out of, out of the snow, and they lived for two years in the woods. And I always thought it was my mission to discover not only what happened during the Holocaust and during this anti-Jewish uh, period, but who was behind it, who got off scotch-free, who, who among the great corporations benefited from it. And so I wrote IBM and the Holocaust. I've exposed the activities of uh, Ford, General Motors, the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, the, um, uh, the Carnegie Institution, and uh, many others who have had their hand. And along the way, I've been uh, following human rights for all peoples from Africa to Asia to the Middle East. And right, and right now, I've uh, been mounting a serious in, in investigation of Area C. You might remember, and I was on your show, when I first brought out the story of terrorist salaries, now known as pay to slay. Now I'm turning my, uh, my attention to Area C, to um, illegal Palestinian settle settlements in Area C. I'm going to remind your viewers that under the Oslo Accords, which seeks a two-state solution, um, Area A, this is signed in 1995, Area A is under complete Palestinian control, PA control, and that's for the cities. Area B covers the, uh, uh, the rural areas of the Palestinian uh, area, and that's under mixed control. Civilian is uh, the PA and uh, security is Israel. And Area C is complete uh, civilian administrative and security control. It's mainly undeveloped, and that's under is Israeli control. Well, about, uh, uh, in about um, 2009, uh, the PA uh, introduced the Fayyad plan to work around Oslo and create a de facto Palestinian state um, along the 1967 lines, the Six-Day War lines, which, as you know, is the Armistice Lines of 1948. And um, it didn't get much traction until they found their uh, traveling partner in Washington. His name was Barack Obama. And he worked with his uh, colleagues in the EU to begin massive amounts of funding. And right now, we are looking at thousands of illegal constructions uh, settlements, roads in Area C, illegal Palestinian settlements, and they're funded by the uh, EU. Now, I'm just going to give you an idea of how massive this is. Um, just, uh, uh, I've just run a three-part series uh, on this topic that's uh, been syndicated to 30 papers, but can you imagine that there's 
over 9,000 dunams. This is obsolete by now. 9,000 dunams in 250 area C locations supported by more than 600 kilometers of illegal access roads, 112,000 meters of, of retaining walls, water systems, ener energy systems, over 10,000 cases now in, adjudi uh, in adjudication being done in broad daylight with large signs uh, uh, celebrating um, uh, ceremonies, uh, blue ribbon cutting press releases, and uh, within uh, a couple of years, the plan is to recognize a Palestinian de facto state, go around Israel, no diplomacy, no security arrangement, no environmental concerns. Oslo is, has been shredded. Now, what makes them illegal is the apparition of Oslo. But Oslo is gone. I predicted it would be gone a month ago. And lo and behold, a few days before we taped this, uh, the Palestinian Authority uh, did say A, B, and C is gone. It's the Wild West right now. So when we talk about Area C, we're talking about Judea and Samaria, aren't we? The biblical heartland of Israel, and Area C represents 60% of, of that territory. That's correct. Um, so the big question is, um, how have they been able to operate knowing that this is under Israeli administration and jurisdiction? So how has Israel allowed the creation of this infrastructure, which is essentially under their control? Well, uh, this is an extraordinary uh, uh, question, and it's one that I'm asked everywhere. Uh, I really don't have the answer, uh, but I know this. And I, of course, I don't speak for the Israeli government. Um, I think it's Israel's vibrant democracy that stops it. Because when Israel sees this infraction, they immediately try to shut it, shut it down. They go to court to get a court order. The court or order can take 10 months, it could take 10 years, it could take 15 years. And while uh, years and years of uh, court action is taking place, the Palestinians continue to create their illegal settlements. And then even when Israel gets court approval after years of trying, as they just did when they demolished 14 illegal structures, even when that occurs, um, then the risk of being right involves condemnations, headlines, resolutions, uh, men, women, and children crying on cue for the cameras. They're experts at, at that. And they have to wonder, can we afford to be right? But now they can't afford to be wrong because there are so many of them that a tsunami is coming. And if something isn't done about it, what you're seeing at the Gaza fence will be coming to a hilltop at Judea and Samaria within a couple of years. Frightening. And also, I, I suppose we have to really uh, look at the consequences of this, that this is a very sinister plan on behalf of uh, your former President Barack Obama and the European Union to actually change the situation on the ground by effectively, de facto, allowing the creation of a Palestinian state without the Palestinians ever having to enter into negotiations with Israel and also then make painful concessions in a genuine uh, peace offer between the two sides. Well, the Oslo uh, process process was intended to engender discussion, negotiation, and uh, uh, a compromise but, uh, between the two parties. But it's all been put asunder, uh, and uh, the two-state solution and the Oslo process has been virtually shredded, and it's been done with millions and, mil and millions of taxpayer uh, euros. And uh, while the people who brought this to my attention uh, uh, thought that it was perhaps 47, 48, 50 million euros. I'm here to say now on your show that soon I'll be bringing out the documentation that uh, uh, will, um, uh, will make it clear that approximately 1 billion euros have already been spent and probably another billion is in the pipeline. There are at least 52 mainstreams of funding that I have discovered, and uh, um, some of these streams have substreams. I found one stream of funding in one geographic area of part 
C that had 60 different programs, including such names as Let's Go to the Movies. Uh, that was an actual name. Uh, they're talking about strengthening the integrity of, uh, far, of uh, farmers and of livestock. There are no checks and balances. And much of this money, a great deal of this money, is actually going through uh, an alleged terrorist front for the PFLP, which is one of the worst of the uh, acknowledged and um, designated terror groups. And the name of that alleged group is the Union of Agricultural Work Committees. And millions of dollars is going through this. And the European uh, uh, countries know that. Not only are we talking about parliamentary dollars, we're talking about the city of Barcelona, the municipality. We're talking about the state provincial funds of the Côte d'Azur, the capital of which is Marseille. We're talking about um, uh, interagency water jurisdictions, interagency uh, energy ju uh, uh, jurisdictions. We're talking about hundreds of millions of German marks and euros going through a medical relief fund called, Medi called Medico. It would take a team of, um, of forensic accountants a year to uh, figure out where all this money is going. So, of course, it's going to take me at least a month. Uh, the big question I have to ask is, what are the implications for Israel's security if this funding and illegal Palestinian settlements continues in, in Area C? If these Ill, Ill, illegal Palestinian settlements are continued, uh, unchecked, and if they're allowed to stand and not be demolished in the same way that Israel has demolished its own Ill, illegal settlements, in the same way that Israel demolished its own settlement in uh, Egyptian ter territory called Yamit, which I'm sure many of your viewers are, are aware of, you are going to see a sovereignty clash on the ground, uh, uh, dunum to dunum, and perhaps door to door. Uh, that there is, um, uh, uh, it, 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 it is not really possible to call these um, uh, Jewish towns and villages in Judea and Samaria illegal settlements. How are they Ill illegal when they've been regularized through the international agreements of uh, Oslo? Uh, and, and of course, you and I both know that it's a sovereignty vacuum, that after the Turks lost these three, uh, uh, these three the desolate provinces, and after the, Brit the British took away 70% of the Jewish-Palestinian territory and created this fake, not fake, but in invented country called Jordan, that, uh, that, that country then illegally invaded in 1948 and created what they now know as the West Bank. So let's have a look at uh, this groundbreaking investigation that actually shows these illegal Palestinian settlements built in Area C, funded by the European Union. Do you know what this is? And this. How about this? This, this, and this. This is a severe violation of international law by the European Union. Let me explain. This is a Dumim region, a very strategic area located in the heart of Israel, bounded by Jerusalem on the west up to the Jordanian border in the east. According to the Oslo courts, the Adumim region is considered Area C, meaning that this area is under full Israeli security and administrative control. But is it? The EU, being a witness of the Oslo courts, has been grossly ignoring their own signature by paving unauthorized roads and building over 1,000 illegal structures in this region alone in the past five years. Buildings that have no permits or legal zone, some built on designated nature reserves and with a complete disregard to Israel's vocal disapproval. Illegal construction that is taking place in the territories by the uh, EU. Not only this, but these illegal structures are splendidly ornamented with the EU flag and supervision, as if saying, don't mess with us. We're the EU. We've got diplomatic immunity. Of course, this is also a violation of international law. The principle of non-intervention. United Nations Charter, quote, Nothing contained in the present charter shall authorize the United Nations to intervene in manners which are essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of any state. But to whom are they providing these illegal houses? To the Arab Palestinians? No, to the Bedouins. 
Today, the local Bedouins are exploited in a very calculated strategy by the EU, formerly called Area C and Palestinian State Building, aimed to create de facto Palestinian control over this area. Official EU document 2014, quote, The European Union and the PA are now actively participating in the planning and zoning of Area C, which, if successful, could pave the way for development and more authority of the PA over Area C. Now, why should the Palestinians want to negotiate when the EU instigates unilateral actions in their favor? The European Union would always encourage direct talks, not unilateral steps on both sides, to find the solution of the two states. In monetary terms, the EU has invested tens of millions of euros in this illegal land grab. This is how temporary Bedouin sites expanded and developed into permanent settlements in just a few years' time. Israel's protest to the EU was answered by a cynical excuse, humanitarian aid. Cynical because, quote, the EU report on Area C and Palestinian state building proposes a rationale for EU intervention in Area C while shifting the general approach from purely humanitarian response to longer term and development oriented activities. Official EU document. But primarily cynical because Israel proposed and prepared the plots to establish towns and villages for the Bedouins in this region with access to tap water, electricity, health, and educational facilities. I mean, where would you rather live? Here or build a permanent home here? But guess what? It was again cynically rejected by the EU. Conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the EU is aware of its own illegal activities. The EU is aware of Israel's humanitarian proposal. It also contravenes its own signature of the Oslo Accords. The EU is violating international law. The EU is completely disrespectful of Israel's government. Stop building illegal settlements. There we can see from that excellently uh, produced video that we hear nothing but complete hypocrisy uh, from the European Union in um, calling out so-called illegal Jewish settlements in Judea and Samaria and are actually funding their own illegal Palestinian settlements to change the facts on the ground. Uh, completely disgraceful. Edwin, I suppose the biggest question I have to ask you in, in regard to that um, superb video that we, we just saw there is what is the European Union's intentions and what do they want to achieve by doing this, knowing that this is in breach of international law and all we get is a complete entire hypocrisy from the European Union? Well, the falsity that's uh, being uh, purveyed in the media is that Israel was not granting any permits for Arab construction in Area C. That's completely false. In uh, uh, 2011 and the first several months of 2012, over 328 uh, um, Palestinian projects were uh, requested and approved. They were all uh, foreign financed by the World Bank, by the EU, by UN Habitat, various organizations, and they were vibrantly approved. But once this plan went into effect, and it really picked up steam in 2013 uh, after the parting shot UN resolution that Barack Obama engineered, um, then uh, the application stopped. And when the application stopped, uh, there was nothing to approve. They just started to build. They said that Israel uh, cannot give us permission to uh, build on our own land. Of course, you and I both know uh, that this was uh, always Jewish land. The Jews were the indigenous people of the area. It was occupied by the Turks uh, the, uh, for 400 years. Uh, the Arabs didn't get to Jerusalem until uh, the seventh century. And of course, we know that the Jews are from Judea and the Arabs are from Arabia. Absolutely. Uh, and why is this so sinister on, on the behalf of the European Union? Um, because clearly, you know, when, when I tried to research videos on this, I found that one video, that was it. There is no real academic papers written on this apart from your own. Um, there is, this is not even really featured in the news, but the danger is this could just completely change the entire situation on the ground for Israel. Absolutely. Uh, pose a major, major security threat. I think we have to look at the reality that the uh, uh, sons and daughters 
of the Europeans that tried to exterminate the Jews all, all across the continent are now uh, again persecuting the Jews. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, it was Jews out of Europe and into Palestine. And now it's Jews out of Palestine and into where? In, in, into the sea. And there, when you say sinister, I'm afraid that you are very c correct because this is a completely anti-Semitic, Hitler-esque attempt to push the Jews out because once this de facto Palestinian state is declared, in, um, if nothing stops it, in about 22, 23, uh, once again, the Palestinians will still not recognize the Jewish state across the fence. After all, what's stopping the uh, Palestinians from declaring their state tomorrow morning. What's stopping them is they don't want to admit who's on the other side of the fence because they won't recognize a, they won't recognize a Jewish state. And to make it even more calculating, I can tell you that 20, 2022 and 2023 will uh, be smack dab in the middle of the U.S. presidential election for 2024, and that will be decidedly more anti-Israel and more anti-Jewish in, in the United States than it is already today as we speak. Uh, Edwin, can you explain to us a little bit more about the security situation that Israel faces and, and how Israel needs, not only for its own spiritual and historical uh, and spiritual significance, Judea and Samaria, which is the biblical heartland of Israel, but you have the strategic plane of the Judean hills um, that provide that protection for Israel. Now, how does the EU's illegal funding of Palestinian settlements in Area C change this security situation on the ground by having thousands and thousands of Palestinian homes being built? Uh, and we know from the Palestinian side that they're not interested in peace with Israel at all. And, you know, if Mohammed uh, Abbas's government were to fall, or if there were open democratic elections, then we know that Hamas would take over. This is not natural growth. This is not urban sprawl. These uh, illegal Palestinian settle settlements funded by uh, EU money uh, are being strategically placed to surround Jewish towns in Judea and Samaria. Uh, to bifurcate Israel. They have one road that cuts right across from the Palestinian area right to, uh, to Arad. They have actually squatted on military reserves such as uh, firing range 918. The, the Israelis are so worried about uh, this confrontation, they've ignored it. But in totality, now that I've connected the dots, they see that they can ignore it no longer. Only if the United States supports Israel in this effort to reverse this illegal act, act, activity can uh, the Jewish state avoid uh, a coming calamity uh, a couple of years from now when they find that whatever, that whatever is on the Gaza fence every Friday uh, that they see t today will be transplanted to El Kana to the uh, edge of Judea and Samaria, and indeed Jerusalem itself. There's actually nothing to stop the EU from building its own airport in Ramallah. It won't even be a Palestinian airport. It'll be an EU airport that Israel will not be able to touch. And then thousands of um, uh, people can come in through an air bridge and go right into Area C. It really has to be reversed because of Israel is going to uh, um, uh, attempt to find peace with its neighbor with its neighbors. It must be able to reverse this in this intergovernmental action that's going on now. It was a lot of EU money and American money that purchased the two-state solution. Now they're mobilizing billions to purchase the two-state dissolution. This must be recognized. Uh, and what um, uh, destabling factor will this cause for uh, Israel's neighbor Jordan? Um, because we know that Israel has a peace treaty with Jordan ever since the Israeli-Jordanian peace accords of 1995. Um, we also know that if, for example, these 
constructions continue and like you say they build an actual airport uh, what is to stop so many uh, Palestinian refugees living in Arab lands actually then moving uh, to Area C living there and increasing the population there to an extent um, that we see a change on the ground and that could then change and damage relations between uh, Israel and Jordan. It's a very insightful ob observation. We already know that part of Jordan was occupied by ISIS until that was reversed and they were, they were ejected. Jordan, you must remember, is a country that was invented by a Winston Churchill memo in, in, in 1922. In America, we have in, uh, Independence Day, but I suppose in Jordan they could have Memo Day when uh, uh, England invented Jordan. And uh, there are so many Palestinians sitting in Palestinian uh, refugee camps, and you must ask yourself, why is there a refugee camp in Ramallah? Why is there a refugee camp in Gaza? Why don't they just walk out the door, go across the street and buy a Starbucks and liberate themselves from this self self-inflicted victimization. But if there's an attempt to expand, to get a greater Palestine, to, ac to actually resume the so-called Arab state, uh, the greater Arab state that was envisioned by Faisal after World War I, which created this entire process, we, we could see family reunification, territorial reunification. We could see the same type of illegal settlements pushing in to Jordan. And uh, uh, I, th I think we need to think that that's in the, often, in the offing. Remember, the Jordanian flag and the Palestinian flag are virtually the same flag. Take a look. Interesting. Uh, and Edwin, um, I mean, what is, what is the prospects? Um, at the moment, the EU, um, the United States, the British government is, is dealing with, uh, with Fatah within the Palestinian Authority um, and, and actually uh, dealing with Mahmoud Abbas as its uh, president of, uh, of the Palestinian Authority. Um, and yet he has no legitimacy in the eyes of his own people. So aren't we talking about a possible scenario where we see thousands and thousands of illegal Palestinian settlements being built on Area C, um, which then could be used as a, a launching pad for future terrorist attacks against Israel? But we're also talking about the possibility uh, of a Hamas being in control of Judea and Samaria, including the Judean hills. Um, surely that has to be a security consideration that the Israelis have got to look at, which makes this whole situation that we're facing very precarious and extremely dangerous. You know, this is much more than a security situation. This is much more than a terrorist uh, threat. Uh, this, is the, this is the potentiality to create a human disaster, a human catastrophe. Thousands of people could be streaming in to Area C from Lebanon, from Syria, from Iraq, from, um, uh, from New York City, from London. Just uh, anyone who wants to come in, and the EU is facilitating this in a kind of a blindness. It's a blind self-destruction, and they're doing it with uh, their own money. 70% of the MEPs who showed up last week in Brussels are brand new. I don't believe they're aware that this money is being spent. Much of it is being spent by a kind of a deep state within the EU, where lower-level administrative uh, um, uh, employ employees are just declaring this to be emergency money, doesn't need to go through the same budget and authentication and auditing process. This is being done by the B team. When I say the B team, we were there before you, we will be there after you. And so these are the people who are really running the government. We have this in the United States, we call it the deep state. You have it in the EU as well. And this includes England's money, Great Britain's money is in, is in there. And I don't think that they would uh, approve of this. Personally, I don't believe there'll be any progress on the ground as long as the PA exists. There are uh, 35,000 people a, a, a day trying to get into Israel have to waiting, uh, and they must wait in lines that are um, uh, probably at least half the time I spent getting out of Heathrow. It took me uh, 90 minutes to get out of Heathrow a couple days ago, so they can get through this checkpoint in about 20 minutes. 
they make two and three times what they can make in the in the Palestinian area. Why? Why are um, uh, Palestinians? Uh, and by the way, the term Palestinian was adopted by the Arabs only after the Six Day War. Anyone can even Google the, uh, the Palestine Liberation Organization and see it was only invented by the KGB and the Arab League in uh, May of 1964. Prior, prior to that, um, all, all the Arabs uh, referred to themselves as Arabs, and the term Palestinians uh, was Jewish Zionists until they had this identity ch change. Uh, why, are, why are people being kept in um, uh, refugee camps? Why hasn't the PA developed its economy? Why hasn't uh, uh, the PA embraced economic partnership? Why have they uh, continued to keep their, peop their people down? There hasn't been, it, there's a president who hasn't been elected. There hasn't been a proper election there for years and years and years. It's a kleptocracy. While there are people in refugee camps, you've seen them, Simon, giant palaces of uh, the uh, bureaucrats uh, dotting the, um, the West Bank and the Judean hills. And, and so I think if we, perhaps the um, uh, coming Trump peace plan will make a point, perhaps the regional powers in the Gulf states and the surrounding countries will say, peace is more important than the Palestinian Authority. We'll have a proper referendum. Only then, forget about Mahmoud Abbas. His time is come and gone. There's too much money in not joining the peace. And that money is EU money. It was American money. The American money is stopped. If you'll take the money out of the process, the peace process will be able to emerge from the shroud of, uh, of economic funding of illegal and inappropriate activity. Uh, which leads me on to my next um, question, uh, which is a very important strategic question for you, um, Edwin. The fact is we're seeing such strategic changes taking place in the region, um, particularly namely because of the uh, Iranian nuclear threat and Iran's sheer crescent dominating Iraq, Syria uh, and Lebanon and also trying to take over Yemen as well. Um, we, we see an emergence of a new alliance between Israel, Egypt, the Jordanians, the Saudis um, and the Gulf states who are very, very concerned about the dominance of um, Iran in the region. Now, it very much seems that the, there has been that shift since the uh, war in Iraq in 2003, where it's the Shiites under the Iranian influence who are the most dominant in the region, which puts an existential threat to the Sunni population. Now, in light of all this, in light of what the Palestinians are doing, are the Palestinians and the PA completely out of step now with the rest of the Sunni world, the moderate Sunni world? Well, um, and in terms of what leverage can be placed on the Saudis and the Gulf states, the Egyptians and the Jordanians, to put pressure upon the Palestinian Authority to actually come to the table and to enter into a genuine peace negotiations with it, or otherwise they're gonna be frozen out as well. Once again, uh, uh, excellent laser-like analysis by you. That's exactly the situation. The Iranians have perfected the nuclear bomb. Uh, uh, it is not assembled. It could probably take two to six weeks to assemble it, but they have the R-265 shock uh, generator and the, um, uh, it's filled with five millimeter, it's uh, uh, um, circumscribed by five millimeter grooves filled with PETN. They have a uh, simultaneous implosion which uh, ignites an exploding bridge wire that uh, triggers a, new, a uh, neutron initiator that causes the mushroom cloud and they've got the missile to deliver it and explode it with air guidance 500 kilometers uh, over the land, just as we did in Hiroshima. They've got that. Uh, they've got the uh, nuclear stockpile. Uh, most of your viewers don't seem to understand or probably do not yet comprehend that 7% is about halfway toward 90%. It's like boiling water. And a 20% is 90% of the way toward weapons grade uh, uh, uranium. And so now they've got these new fast uh, centrifuges that can distill the uranium isotopes. They're on their way. 
and uh, the, uh, the the reason they have long long range missiles is not to hit just Jerusalem. They want to hit Riyadh. They want to hit Berlin. They probably want to hit Manchester, and um, then uh, uh, these uh, targeted groups now no longer ignore this. They are um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They're willing to make peace with Israel. There's other factors involved. They're just saying, why do we need to keep fighting this war for 70 years that is part of a 1,400-year tradition? Israel is modern. They have uh, uh, an advanced society. They're willing to share. And so they're saying, maybe we're not so interested in the, uh, in the windfall of, um, of terrorism, in the windfall of, vic of, vic of victimhood. We'd like to to turn a new leaf. Israel is taking advantage of that. Qatar, which plays a very, very fishy, funny game, is working both sides against the middle. Saudi Arabia, the United States of America is involved. Um, Great Britain through Boris Johnson is working on this. Other countries are. So this is the emerging umbrella of peace and progress. And the EU, thanks to taxpayer money is standing in the way because the EU, the same people who are uh, the descendants of those who appeased Adolf Hitler and uh, Mussolini are now appeasing the, um, uh, uh, the forces of Iran, the forces of Hamas, of Hezbollah, of the Palestinian Authority. It's good for no one, not anyone in the region and not really not anyone in Europe. Absolutely. So in, in light of the most precarious situation that Israel faces right now, uh, uh, and that is uh, that uh, as of this recording, um, Israel nearly went to war with uh, Hezbollah over an uh, anti-tank missile that was fired at an Israeli jeep with five Israeli soldiers. Now, had that missile hit that jeep, we'd be looking at a situation where Israel would have no choice but to go to war against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The fact is they have 160,000 rockets and missiles fired at Israel. Um, this is combined with the fact that there were 80,000 Iranian troops and militias only 50 miles from Israel's border in, um, in Syria, which is a complete red line. Uh, how would Israel going to war against Iran and Hezbollah and southern Lebanon change the fact on the ground. We know that Hamas could then also fire rockets and missiles like they're doing currently into Israel. How would the Palestinian Authority respond to that? Because if they then entered into a, a war with Israel, then their whole plan to create a de facto Palestinian state could be uh, curtailed. Well, you're, you're venturing into very dark and ominous territory, which is completely possible. Uh, any, any minute, uh, the Israelis could take out those precision guided missile factories that you've made reference to. Um, what your viewers uh, should understand is that you made reference to a Hezbollah tank shell hitting uh, an Israeli car or tank. In Israeli territory. In Israeli tank, and um, the um, news crews captured a, uh, some dead bodies being evacuated or highly in injured. Those were dummies. Uh, it was all staged. Israel allowed Hezbollah to kill some uh, dummies. Uh, that's why uh, Hezbollah Nasrallah just said, oh, it's a Hollywood IDF. Uh, I'll just remind you that uh, there would be no uh, Normandy invasion if there weren't fake t tanks and fake ships all up along the English Channel. But uh, Israel had the planes uh, overhead ready to deal a massive blow. I'm not sure that they should have avoided that, but it quadruply shows that Israel exercises restraint. They'll do anything to avoid going to war, but they know how to go to war. Anything to avoid a military strike, but they know very well how to make the military strike. At some point, that mil military strike is going to be necessary. At some point, the Quds Force, uh, which is located on the Syrian border and Iraq, is going to have to be dealt with. And either it's going to be a bloody, massive uh, blow, a series of incremental blows, which I think is no longer possible because Hezbollah and uh, the Quds Force are now reacting within hours 
instead of days and weeks for, re for retaliation. We're seeing escalation. This requires thought. Israel is thinking. They're thinking about what needs to be done. They're thinking about the Americans. They're thinking about the EU. They're thinking about their uh, entire citizenry. And at some point, Israel will make the calculation that it's time to take the uh, factories out. They won't take one factory out. They'll take them all out. It'll be a massive blow. Uh, and Edwin, go going back to the whole illegal funding of these Palestinian settlements uh, by the European Union because it's all linked. Now, we know that since President uh, Trump uh, took power uh, in his inauguration in two th January 2017, he's completely turned the situation around. We have the most pro-US uh, president towards Israel in Israel's modern history. Um, now, obviously, I believe that the US administration will be aware of this and the EU's role in all of this. What role can the United States play to put pressure on the European Union to stop the funding of these illegal Palestinian settlements? First, as Israel reacts to the funding, uh, the United States will block U uh, UN Security Council resolutions of condemnation. Second, the United States will place pressure on the EU to curtail its illegal activities, its illegal funding, their accomplices. They're actually in violation of uh, international law. Unfortunately, the Oslo Accords um, do not allow uh, taking to the world court or dispute uh, by any method other than a vague negotiation around a table. It's a flawed agreement. It uh, was probably a pipe dream, but it's the only dream that's available, and that dream is now evap uh, evaporating. Basically, as I'm looking at you, Oslo is disappearing completely. There is no more Oslo. And Oslo was the facade, the tissue paper that held the piece together, and now that is gone. You're really going to have to ask yourself, Every hour that goes by, more dunams, more roads, more infrastructure is being illegally constructed with EU connivance. And at what point is it all going to burst into an explosion? Uh, and what are the implications for Europe regarding this? Because we, we know that, for example, um, we've seen a complete change in, in Europe because of the migrant crisis in 2005, where over uh, a million uh, Syrian refugees and other refugees made their way into Europe, which has changed the entire migration of Europe and the population of Europe, which will change. So how will what we're seeing now with their support for illegal Palestinian settlements in Area C um, have a security implication for, for uh, the European Union? I think it's going to have a security implication because it's be going to create um, a stronger, more, uni more unified and more identified um, uh, base for the type of attack that we've seen before. Uh, it could actually turn into an ISIS state. Uh, if uh, Gaza it was turned into a Hamas state, then the West Bank could also be turned into a Hamas-like state. You alluded t t to that. There's a constant war between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. This is a war uh, where um, Israel is uh, tiptoeing through the elephant legs and trying to stay um, uh, pro proactive. But anything is possible in this scenario because it's unplanned, it's unstructured, it's Ill Ill illegal, it takes no cog cognizance of Israel, it takes no cognizance of ecology, of diplomacy, of uh, of, a, of, of, of security. This is really not only the elephant in the room, but the elephant where the curtain is just beginning to be removed and people will see how dire the situation is. Area C, the funding must be stopped. Area C, the funding must be exposed. And if there is something left to Oslo, then let's implement it. Let's go, get down to brass tacks. And if these two peoples can exist in peace, then they should be allowed to, uh, and their um, kleptocracies should be put aside in the PA and Gaza.
Um, Edwin, I, I just want to talk about the the need that the, the European Union has for Israel, particularly the member states, on, on, on two major issues where Israel is at the forefront in terms of technology, but also in the forefront of security. That ever really since the ISIS attacks in Europe, starting in 2005 with the Charlie Hebdo attack, uh, we've seen, particularly with um, President Macron, uh, reaching out to Israel for Israeli security expertise. We're finding out that Israel's prevented ISIS uh, plane attacks that could result in the death of thousands of people, that Israel's actually protected Europe from from major terrorist attacks and without Israeli know-how expertise and intelligence Europe would be in a more dark place than it is already. Also the other fact is that because we're moving into the 21st century Israel is leading the way in terms of innovation and technology and so therefore the future economy of the world is being built in Israel. So. The European Union needs Israeli security. They also need Israeli technical knowledge and innovation in order to keep up with the economy in the 21st century. Um, and isn't the European Union sowing its own seeds for destruction if it's actually working to try and destroy the Jewish state? Once again, uh, uh, laser-like analysis. Uh, let's deal. Let's deal with the uh, economics. Yeah. Uh, uh, as uh, many of your viewers know, uh, Israel is an economic engine for technology, for automobiles, for AI, for robotics, for medicine, for pharmaceuticals, for agriculture, for water resources, and Europe needs that. Um, uh, Israel is, of course, involved significantly in stopping these terrorist attacks through its information and um, uh, I think you need to think of a guard at Europe's border. That guard is Israel, and Europe is aware of it. But Israel, but Europe keeps taking a crowbar and hitting the kneecap of Israel, and Israel keeps standing up. Eventually, Israel may step out of the way, and all these forces will come. Will come in. I really don't understand this self-destructive uh, character. But on the other hand, we have to look at the history. Yep. Europe has done a, uh, an extraordinary job of destroying itself numerous times. Europe has done an extraordinary job of uh, helping to enslave uh, millions of people. Uh, remember, slavery existed for a thousand years before the United States came to be through the European slave trade in partnership with the Arab slave trade. Uh, the Europeans decimated Africa. They decimated uh, parts of Asia. They decimated their own continent repeatedly. I can't enumerate the amount of blood and suffering that Europe has inflicted upon itself and upon others around the world. And I and often in exchange for money and often in exchange for self-aggrandizement. And I think Europe needs to um, really join the 21st century and the move for peace among nations. And it's such a shame that in the European Union we, we see it's controlled by so many secular uh, militants and they don't recognize what is said in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you and it's very very clear from what we said from this program today that the European Union is cursed and it's going to continue to be cursed but before we come to the end of the program um, Edwin can you share with us what what our viewers can do to expose this illegal funding of Palestinian settlements in area C using our taxpayers money because as of this program uh, we're still in the European Union. Well, I think that if a, that if a taxpayer uh, in the European Union uh, does not want their money being used for this purpose, they need to call their local representative, their local MEP, and ask in clear words, is my money going? How much of my money is going? W give me the audit, give me the money trail, and let me make a decision. If that decision is no, say so. Excellent. Uh, and Edwin, would you plug your super book? Uh, I'm giving you the opportunity now, um, IBM uh, and the Holocaust uh, and why it's such an incredible read. 
Well, IBM and the Holocaust is just one of my several books, also Nazi Nexus to Farhood, but it was a New York Times bestseller. There's over a million copies in print in at least 20 or 30 languages in 190 countries. And this shows, how, uh, this book documents how IBM uh, organized and uh, um, co-planned all six phases of the Holocaust, the identification of the Jews, their expulsion from society, the um, confiscation of their assets, the ghettoization, the, de the, the deportation, and even the extermination of the Jews. They did it not with computers, but the forerunners of computers, those Hollerith punch cards that your uh, more uh, senior viewers will, re will remember. They've never admitted it. They were co-conspirators in the murder of six million Jews. And tomorrow morning, they're not going to call your producer and complain that I accused them of genocide. They'll be silent. That's what the book is about. Superb. Um, Edwin, um, I want to thank you so much uh, for being my guest on, on the Middle East Report. And, you know, thanks to your... Uh, expertise and, 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 and you are a genius in uncovering this and examining everything that's going on and, and, and writing these books. Um, how important is it that, 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 Chris, that Christians really play a major role in standing with Israel and the Jewish people? And you've got 20 seconds. Christians have always played a role in standing for, is, for is Israel long before Herzl, long before you and I were here and into the foreseeable future. Their trails are, and their destinies are intertwined. Amen. Uh, Edwin Black, thank you so much for being my guest on today's Middle East Port. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching today's program. I think today's program has been a very prophetic program as we can see the dangers facing Israel in a few years' time. Uh, so it's imperative that all of us might have to write to our members of parliament, including our MEPs, and exposing this sinister plan by the European Union to fund illegal Palestinian settlements. Where? In Judea. Where is Judea? It's the biblical heartland of Israel. And so therefore, we will show you this uh, beautiful song in dedication to those courageous Jewish settlers who are living on the Shomron, which is the biblical heartland of Israel. So thank you for watching today's Middle East Report. Who's me?